We are reading Shri uh, Shri uh, Prema Bhakti Chandraga verse 96. I like this verse so much because it's a glorification of Bhakti. And Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj is explaining how Bhakti enters into the hearts of all living entities. Very nice. Very beautiful, beautiful points to meditate. <coughs> So the verse goes like that. People practice non-dualistic knowledge of fruitive activities, not knowing about bhakti yoga. In this way, they are ignorant in different ways. I will not hear their talks knowing the transcendental truth. Loving devotion is the very life of the devotees. Transcendental truth commentary. While defining the transcendental truths of Prema Bhakti, Srila Thakur Mahashai, Srila Naratam Das Thakur, <coughs> first speaks about those who are ignorant of the devotional principles. Jnana, Karma, Kore, Loka, Nahi, Jane, Bhakti, Yoga, Nana, Mate, Hoya, Agyan. People who practice non-dualistic knowledge of fruitive activities, not knowing bhakti yoga. In this way, they are ignorant in different ways. Persons who are unaware of the devotional principle take shelter of fruitive activities non-dualistic knowledge or mystic yoga. In the universal scripture, Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Lord discusses karma and jnana and so on, but he defines the devotee who is fixed in bhajan as the best of yogis. Now comes this verse from Bhagavad Gita. O oh, Arjuna, the yogis are better than the fruitive workers that are fixed in penances known as Chandrayana. And they are better than the ascetics or those who meditate on the unqualified Brahman and the jnanis. Therefore, O Arjuna, be a yogi. And of all the yogis, he performs bhakti yoga, worshipping me with faith, is the greatest of all yogis. Shilatako Mahashai says, Nana Mate Haya Agyan. Foolish and ignorant persons do not know what is the constitutional position of Bhakti, nor what is her appearance, nature, and result. Therefore, or thus, they give up the practice of Bhakti and become dedicated to karma, jnana, and other practices. So that is uh, also discussed in Introduction to Bhagavad Gita, where Srila Prabhupada is saying that 
if we want to really get closer to understand the Lord, we need to have a relationship, right? We have heard this so many times. And our dear Gurudev, he has explained and made it visible that Prabhupada uses the word relationship in so many ways and so often in that introduction. And he has been analyzing this, what is a karmi, a jnani, and a yogi, and what is the difference to a bhakti yoga. So I don't want to go in this for details. If you want to say something, Janana Maharaj, for the clarification of this, karmi, jnani, and yogi. I think it, it is basically clear, maybe in short, that the karmi, this, I mean, we all have been this, you know, it's not that it's unknown to us. I have been also working hard to get the results of that work and to save some money and to buy a car or to buy anything that I would like to have. I have also tried to understand the scriptures like a jnani and thinking that the knowledge will be my savior. And yogi, yes, I also try to meditate in silence and peace on Paramatma in the heart. So this is a different levels of how to understand the supreme truth. But now, Nara Tom Dastak was saying that it is not necessary to go into that and talk about it or hear it, because loving devotion is the very life of the devotees. So we follow in the footsteps of our great Rajabhasis, and we want to create a loving relationship with devotional feelings. So that was the first subject here. And now comes what is bhakti? It is so beautiful. What is the essence of this bhakti yoga? It is bhakti. In the previous verses, we have slightly discussed that bhakti is the essence of the Ladini and Samvet operations of the Lord's innate or inner um, energy. <clears throat> Srila Baladev Vidyabhushana quotes the Shrutis when he writes, deep realizations and deep bliss, they reside in bhakti who is herself the very form of transcendental taste. So yesterday we had a very nice uh, sharing in uh, about uh, Shrimad Chaitanya, oh, about Chaitanya Chaitamrita, and the question arises about the relationship between Shimati Radhika's energy and her form. How are they connected? How we can, you know, should we make a differentiation? Should we understand that the form is more important or the energy? And Gurudev made it clear in the, in the end that we should not make a difference between Shimati Radhika and her energy because they are one and the same. She is not different from the energy, and the form is also the energy. So, and that bhakti that we are, that I am trying to learn and to cultivate in the heart, is the essence of the Ladini, Ananda, and some with operations of the Lord's in a, Energy. So means bhakti is growing on ananda and on chit, on eternal knowledge of in bliss, blissful 
knowing, you know, who I am and who is the Supreme Lord and who is Shimati Radhika and getting also the mercy of this inner revelation. So this is the combination of how bhakti arises. Deep realizations and deep bliss reside in bhakti. So when, for example, I practice to pray to Shrimati Radhika for mercy or to Gurudev and the Vaishnavas, to our Chayas for mercy, then I open my heart and my consciousness. And so when Bhakti Devi comes, when Shrimati Radhika gives the mercy of her love, of her potency, of her Kripakataksha, her sidelong glance, then deep realizations will come in form of unexpected revelations and deep bliss of unexpected feelings. I just want to say it in simple words because sometimes it is so, you know, it's, co it's complicated how to explain, but I think it is very simple also. And I like to learn from Gurudev how to make things simple. So not to think it is very complicated because Shimad Eradika is after all a very simple cowherd girl with the most, you know, loving nature and most ecstatic and deepest heart that anyone could ever try to describe and even Krishna fails to describe her. But the Bhakti Devi is herself the form of transcendental taste. So transcendental taste is also sometimes explained as rasa. We know that Shrimati Radhika is the source of rasa. She is rasa sar. So when she comes in any form in our lives by mercy, then deep realizations and deep bliss are like coming in my heart, in all of our hearts. And, and, and then also Baba gives the reason. If it were not so, then bhakti could never be in the cause of the Supreme Lord's subjugation. So she is so overwhelming in her deepest qualities of giving bliss and giving this, you know, deepest realizations that even Krishna becomes subjugated, means he is so much in, in deep feelings that he can forget who he is, namely the Supreme Lord, and he becomes a small cowherd boy trying to serve her by many, many ways, for example, combing her hair or crying uh, on her feet and trying to decorate her and giving her foot leg. Like so that is the potency of her love. And so she also not only works like that on Krishna, of course, he is, you know, her beloved and she wants to make him happy. But she also works on this, on all living entities who want to help her serve her beloved again. And now comes a very interesting sentence, and I, I ask you, Gurudev, and also Jainanda Maharaj and Andakaji and all devotees to help me to get this, uh, to get through to this sentence in a deep, deep level of feeling. Mm -hmm. Although such a transcendental energy is the essence of Ladini, and some with aspects of the Lord's innate energy, it appears within the senses of the devotee who is surrendered 
unto the Lord's lotus feet becomes identical with him and thus becomes active on its own strength. This is a very uh, deep uh, subject. How to understand how Shimadiradika, her creeper, her mercy comes into the heart of the living entity, what she is doing there as bhakti, and how she is inviting all living entities who are surrendered unto the Lord, lotus feet, back to you know the service that we have heard is the Hari Hari at the end of the Maha Mantra, to invite all of us back to become her maidservant, the Hare Hare in Maha Mantra. Come back. Don't just stand outside and worship us. Come and enter into the sweetest exchange of love that your heart has been eagerly crying for. So here we understand good if and correct me if, if, if this is not right, but from this sentence, I could feel that Shimati Radhika is both. She is transcendental energy, but at the same time, she appears within a devotee who is surrendered to Krishna. She becomes also so attractive. She becomes identical with that devotee and becomes active in her own way in our hearts. This is how I, I felt this. She is, she is coming inside of our lives when she feels that this devotee is really wanting to assist me. He wants to be my servant and becomes active in her own strength. appears within the senses of a devotee so that the senses become transcendental senses so that my senses that have been used for my enjoyment before for feeding my mouth for you know like whatever i try to do with all the senses for my own body and for my own comfort but now the senses that have been taken over by bhakti, by divine love, by Srimati Radhika's mercy, they become transformed and become activated by bhakti, by divine love. And thus they become spiritualized in a way and they can also transform themselves to such a level that they become eternally able to serve Shimati Radhika in the realm of, of divine love. So these senses, they are now looking material, but when Bhakti Devi comes, when Shimati Radhika's mercy comes, they are not material anymore because they just want to serve. And at that moment, that is the highest uh, transformation. When deep realizations and deep bliss come, because of a transformation from, like we say, lust to love, from self-enjoyment to service. Can you also share on this? Is that, uh, this is what I feel, what do you feel on this? Uh, yeah. So, now I feel. If too much is philosophical, I'm very sorry. So today now, after hearing Trinity Didi's explanation, also after reading, it is uh, there is three energy, uh, three three energy, Sandini and Sambit and Fradini, all coming from this coming from Sat Chit Ananda. So Fradini is uh, like uh, 
エネルギーオブプレジャーギビングポテンシーブラウパーですね。プレジャーギビングポテンシーズパーソニフィケーションイズシュリマテラダラニ。そのラダラニーズベリフェイマスフォーザサービス to please the Lord. So most she can please or she can worship the Lord. Therefore her name is Radika. Some who could worship most. And this sambit is interesting. Sambit is, it is a recognition. So the nature of soul, super souls、uh, is nature is kind of recognition. We say cheat. We cannot feel. We cannot understand. So, and this represent and it is say Krishna. Although Krishna is not energy, but、uh, you know, and then, so this kind of why bhakti combination of Fradini and、uh, Sambit, because this kind of energy flowing from Radha and Krishna or say,、uh, we could understand we have Ishta Deva, we also we are service. At that time, we can do some kind of respiration is coming. That is seva. Bhakti means we need someone who is sub, sub, and also ishta deva. So, and this kind of, you know, service and ishta deva. And this kind of、uh, reaction, kind of,、uh, this kind of,、uh, Respiration, better word, maybe respiration.、Mm. That is called the bhakti. So we need both,、uh, how do you say, in Ashuraya and Vishaya. So we need both, and both and respiration coming, this is called Baba say, like a bhakti. And then, So, if we surrender lotus feet of the Lord, then surrender means give up our ego, false ego, ahankara. Then, influence of material energy, we can, then if we surrender, we can free from influence of material energy. Then we become influence of spiritual energy. Like a yoga maya or one sense, Fradini Shakti means Radha's energy. And then at that time, we also recognize Ishta Deva. And that time, we can have like a bhakti. So, and then real、uh, bhakti s t a r t And this Bhagavad Gita, I want to say,、uh, Brahma Buddha Prasanna Atma. So we have to surrender. We have to,、uh, we have to the influence of、uh, Fradini Shakti. Then at that time, if we recognize Ishta Deva, at that time, Bhakti will start.、Uh, that is, <laughs> Today I felt. Jai Ho, thank you. So nice. So I love this explanation because when Radha Mohan g i v e mercy, then they appear within the senses of a devotee. Who is surrendered, become identical with him, and thus become active on its own strength. So, it is something I love this idea that, like a word, if you always teach us, yeah, we become viewers, not doers. So, we invite Radha Mohan to, you know, to purify and help, and we, we pray to Shimati Radhika. 
please make me a dasi. And then at one point, it just comes from within that they really start acting on us as a team, like in Mahamantra. They are also a team. They are always embracing each other, dancing with each other, laughing and smiling. And they invite me, come. They invite us, come. And we help you also. And Sripad, Vidya Bhushana says about this, very nicely, when the heart becomes purified through the process of hearing and chanting, loving devotion which resides in the Lord's eternal associates will descend to the material world like the current of the nectarian heavenly Ganges, Ganges through the drain of the sadhu devotees, the Guru Parampara. So this is also a very, very beautiful meditation. It's, it's actually how it happens. How does this mercy descend it comes from the eternally loving associates of Radha Mohan. Like Dasis, they come to this material world like a current of nectar. And through the channel of the sadhu devotees means through the channel of the Guru Parampara. And when the heart becomes purified, when the heart is ready to absorb more and more transcendental energy because of hearing and eagerness and open-hearted simplicity to receive and to follow the great devotees, then this mercy of Srimati Radhika, of Radha Mohan, of Gauranga comes like a current, like a river, like it, it's complained, like uh, compared, like the heavenly Ganges. It comes through the channel of the Guru Parampara. And that's why we have repeatedly uh, heard about the mercy of our Gayatri mantras. This is the channel where this mercy is coming through. And how to receive and to open for these channels of love that are connected to the spiritual divine realm and to be able to receive and listen and hear and again listen and then with the internal it, internal ears and heart that is how Vidya Vidya Bhushana, our one of our great Acharyas and teachers, said that how mercy or how Bhakti Devi enters into the heart of each of our, one of the living entities. And when it thus enters into the heart of the individual, it manifests eternally perfect love for Sri Krishna there. So it's not that I have to do it. Mm. It just happens by the natural process of devotion, by a lot of faith and hope and love. This morning while we were driving to Govardhan, I was 
still thinking about what we discussed yesterday about the, my spiritual identity being a clothes that maybe I don't fit in yet. But then I thought, no, that is very hopeless. Actually, it's waiting there. It's fitting. I just have to put them on. That's another story at all, isn't it? It's fitting already. Otherwise, I wouldn't have received it from my Gurudev. He will not give me clothes that will not be fitting. I get the perfect prashadi clothes of my dear Guru Mandari, who has gotten it from dear Shimati Radhika. And it's just that I am not ready to put it on yet. I'm just a little ignorant, foolish, scared, or not. You know, I'm just like hesitating. But the hope is that always at any moment I it can it can you know it can happen that the mercy will come and I will be making realizations. I will always meditate on this channel of love that Vidya Bhushna is explaining. And then it enters into the heart. And then it manifests eternally perfect love for Sri Krishna. So who can manifest eternally perfect love for Sri Krishna? Who can do that? It's easy, no? This summer, so love is already in the heart, but still we can have love from someone who has love. So, like, uh, this spiritual succession is like this. From Goroka, Gorokera Premadana, so Harinama Sankirta. The from Goroka, so Harinama is coming, also Achar is coming from Goroka mm. to give us some, you know, Harinam and Mantra. Then we can receive love and mercy. At that time, we can, we can also revive our love or receive our love. That's my feeling. Yes. When it thus enters into the heart of the living entities of each individual, it manifests eternally perfect love for Sri Krishna there. So for me, I feel that all the our wonderful perfected manjaris in our parampara up to up to Janavama, up to Nityananda, up to Radha and Mohan. They are descending, they are ready to give their mercy at any moment into all the hearts who are connected with them. And Gurudev, Guru Manjari, is collecting a garland of our hearts, making a garland for her Guru Manjari. And her Guru Manjari is giving it to her Guru Manjari. And like that, the garlands of our hearts, of our aspirations to become a Dasi, is given up, up until it reaches Shirada Mohan's hearts. And like this, there is a perfect channel of love where we all are connected. And it can, at any moment, it is working. It is working already. Once Gurudev said to me, it's not that your eternal body will just appear and then you are like completely different. It's already shining in you. You know, your personality is already part of that. It's not that all of a sudden you are somebody completely different because our beautiful, loving personalities, which are the purest, you know, of our heart's desires to serve Radha Mohan and Shrimati Radhika, to serve them to serve her, is already that shining, transcendental, beautiful soul 
who has now gotten the entrance into the circle of the Darcy's. Therefore, while in the schools of karma, jnana, and so on, the means and the goal are two separate things, in bhakti, the means and the goal are identical. So, for example, in karma yoga, we try to work hard, we try to set us a goal, and then we do our karma, and uh, we work hard, we, we learn hard, we accomplish the things that need to be accomplished. And then with that money or with that degree or whatever results we have, we are trying to enjoy and uh, be a good person, be a, a rich or well-known or admired personality here in this world. So we have the, the way, is hard work or recognition or working ourselves up the ladder of success. And then we are there up on the ladder and then we have, wow, finally I am the star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can <laughs> be uh, feeling loved by all of my hard works and I have all that I ever desired. Like This is a karma principle. But in bhakti, we see it is the practice of the way and the goal are identical. Why? Because to do the practice, I need devotion. And devotion is my desire. But to get this pure devotion is actually the mercy of the Dasis of Shrimati Radhika. And that's why we are connected to this beautiful channel of love which is called the Guru Parampara. And once we are connected and once we are begging for their mercy and for service, it's the goal. Like there is not such a big difference between the way of begging and crying and uh, connection and the goal of being in the service. It's not, it's like, it's very close, it's identical. That's what Baba is saying here. Someone may say that practice which results into a certain accomplishment is called sadhana and sadhyate asau, the accomplishment of a certain activity is called sadhya then how can sadhana and sadhya be identical how can be the way sadhana and the goal be identical someone may ask that baba says the answer is from the above mentioned philosophical statement we can understand that the first manifestation of the self-manifest transcendental potency of the Lord named Bhakti is named Sadhana, or the stage of practice. And the second manifestation is its fruit, named Sadhya. This is the great speciality of the transcendental practice of Bhakti that distinguishes it from all other practices. So means, in uh, simple words, that in bhakti, the process and the fruit is bhakti. We are practicing bhakti and we are receiving bhakti and it's all bhakti and it's all Growing.
So that is the speciality in bhakti that when it is growing, when it starts like the seed, like Gurudev, Nityananda is giving the seed of bhakti. My Gurudev is giving the seed into the heart and then it's growing into a plant and then it's growing into a fruit. And it's all the same energy that is growing. It's the energy of love. And it's Srimati Radhika's love. Yes. Like uh, for example, <clears throat> so we sometimes we say God is Prema, Krishna Prema. So how to get to Krishna Prema? And then we then Guru Dev say, okay, chanting Maha Mantra. So we chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So this is called sadhana. But from beginning, we, we may chanting mantra. Sometimes with, you know, maybe some little bit mechanically or sometimes rub, sometimes concentrate, sometimes not concentrate. But slowly, slowly, we are purifying. Then we can chant with love. We can chant with Radha and Mohan and also ourselves together. So, and then if we attend Prema, still we are chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So sometimes, so we are not perfected. We are doing, we are, we make conditioned and chanting and we become Siddha. Still, we are chanting. So, this uh, chanting is the same. But difference is someone who is unmature or unripe, like a mango. Mango, we eat green mango. It is not sweet. But the mango becomes ripe. Mango is very tasty, very sweet. So similarly, from beginning, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra may not sweet, but uh, slowly, slowly, Cheto Dharpana Marjana, heart become clean, and then more taste is coming, like a Guru Dev. So yesterday, we are invited one Pandara, and uh, that devotee, one devotee who is uh, Kesha Baba's disciple, uh, accomplished one brata. I don't know exactly. Maybe some Mona did not speak in Kartik time or Chaturmasha or something like that. So he accomplished. So he want to give some Pandara to all the devotee, all the Brajabasis. So, and then, we are invited. And Keshava Baba, Guru Dev, personally cook for the devotees. Oh my God, this is really amazing. And more amazing, that devotee's elder brother was Siddha, is Siddha. Name is Shamasundara Baba. Uh, another name is Moni Baba. You have to explain Pandara. It means to invite uh, for a feast, for a big prashad, uh, uh, festival of prashad and distributing. So his sadhan is so much amazing. He did not sleep so much. He did not even winter his one cross. He did not eat so much. Yesterday, brother said, oh, actually, he lives on Charanamrita. And uh, his chanting is so pure. And that Siddha Moni Baba, and uh, I think brother was chanting. And cobra came. You know, snake came. And the other devotee was very scared. Oh my God, we have to run away or we have to, you know, 
、えー、take cobra off. But this money baba say, no, you don't need to do anything. That cobra came to hear my chanting. It is say、uh, in Brindavan, all living entity is, is devotees. Some, some living entity, past life, maybe some mistake. Then become sometimes, you know, animal, sometimes cobra, insect, etc. So that Baba could talk with, with plant, with animals and snake. He's saying, Cobra came because he w a n t to hear chanting, Harikata. This is Brindava. So we are completely surprised his sadhana. He did 17 years bhajan in Barshane. I don't know when he perfected, but、uh, he b e c o m e Siddha. Even Kesha Baba said, It's very difficult to find this kind of person who could complete the sadhana. So, what I want to say, so chanting is so, if something is so pure, even cobra or even animal won't come and want to hear. Like a Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahababu goes through in Jarikanda forest. At that time, Chaitanya Mahababu was chanting. Then, tiger and lion, all, you know, you know elephant, and all animal s was start also and chanting become ecstasy. So, this is a so Siddha chanting, a pure chanting. So, this is a,、uh, this is a sadhya goal. And also, sadhana. So, we are may not pure chanting. Still, we keep chanting and slowly, slowly we will attain this sadhya by the mercy of our Guru Dev and Radha Mohan. Love of God, Bhakti, is the moon that releases the moonbeams of all paramount or the highest bliss. It's the essence of all good fortune in the world, the very livelihood of Sattvaguna, who naturally. Delights the Supreme Lord, who performs endless pastimes and whose sweetness is matchless due to his complete transcendental bliss. If she enters into his heart in any way, not waiting for any. Regulation. So here, Bhakti or love of God is compared to the moon. The moon has beautiful, beautiful moonbeams, and we all know how much we like to see when the moon, the full moon, is shining. We can see the moonbeams and we can feel them also. And these moonbeams are all the highest bliss. It's the essence of all good luck, good fortune, all what every entity is desiring. It is full of sattva gun. It's not only sattva gun, it's It's Vishuddha Sattva on the highest platform. This love of God becomes transcendentally 
empowering the living entity to enter into the transcendental Leela. Because she is naturally delighting Mohan. And she can enter into his heart in any way, not waiting for any regulation. So she can enter also in our heart in any moment. She cannot be fragmented. She cannot be cut by any other object. She, can, she does not tolerate any other motivation than love. She consists of the essence of the Lord's pleasure potency. And her shape is the particular knowledge that consists of the desire to attain the Lord and follows all that is favorable to him. Her body is the mental faculty of the loving devotee. She makes her own body succulent with her own self, which is more succulent. What is the meaning of succulent? Can you check it on that? Then the essence of nectar. The devotee's concealment of her confidential nature is her moon necklace. The pearl-like tears of the devotees are the ornaments or gems on her necklace. Her nature is to keep all her qualities within herself. And she has turned, yes, you got it? Juicy. Juicy. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> Juicy, you're huh? Succulent. You're, you're sucky. Mm. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> so again, she makes her own body juicy with her own self which is more juicy than the essence of nectar. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> and the devotee's concealment of her confidential nature is her moon necklace. Means that devotee is also hiding their love. The devotee is not running around, I am so full of love, but that is the beauty that Shimati Radhika gives to her maid servants. They are hidingly full of love, but they are they are not running around. They are full of juice. And that is like a moon necklace. And the pearl-like tears of the devotees are the ornaments of her necklaces. Her nature is to keep all her qualities within herself. She has turned the treasures of all human pursuits into her maidservant. Yes, it's such a long sentence, my God. So this is very beautiful. Pearl like tears of the devotee as ornaments of gem of her necklaces. Virapak Sumanjiri first bus and Baba explained. So Raghunatha Das was uh, sometimes Sadaka Deha, sometimes Siddha Deha. So when Siddha Deha he was in Siddha Deha, Siddha Be uh, uh, and then he was uh, he was direct association of Shirimate Radharani and serving her and also her Mohan. And then when that vision, that Lila uh, disappear. 
then he become again in Sadakadeha. So at that time, he is like, uh, he feels so much agony and suffering and cry for Srimati Radhika. Then at that time, Baba explained, such devotee who cry for Radha, who cry for Sri Radha, then Radha personally came to console or Radha's associate come to console her. This is Ragnadas or Siddha, uh, Swarpa Siddha devotees uh, situation. So this part like tears of the devotee is like the ornaments of Radha's necklace. And Radha's always love that devotee. Radha always help that devotee. So Baba mentioned, console the devotee. Personally, Radha came and personally consoled. So I was so much uh, touched in that word. So that's uh, so beautiful how love, Srimati Radhika's love for her devotees and the love for the love of the devotees is already, like we heard before, that love itself is the, is the way and is the goal. Now sometimes we can hear, we have this on our beat bags, from the shop of Shama. Love is the way, love is the goal. This is what is mentioned here now. How love is the way and love is the goal. The tears that we cry is already the love. And Shimati Radhika is making a necklace out of this moon-like, pearl-like tears of her dasi. And her shape comes in the love of the devotees that have a desire to come back and attain the service of her beloved Mohan and herself. And her body is in the mental faculty of the devotee, means when love of God appears in any devotee, the mind is not anymore in any external uh, deviation. The mind is full of love and the mind is emanating love. And therefore the mind is a shape of that beautiful love to Shimati Radhika. And she takes the body there. She becomes alive in the mind of the devotees, in the mind of her dasis. That's why we also hear that manjari means the mirror of the, of the mind. Man is the mind and jari means mirror. So the manjaris, the small dasis of Srimati Radhika, they reflect her mind. And therefore, if, if anyone, if any soul here in this world come so close to the service of these dasis, they also start to reflect the mind of that dasi. In our case, that will be our Guru Manjari and her Guru Manjari. Reflecting their minds means feeling their desires to please Swamini and following their desires and listening their realizations and their deep feelings. 
and that will transform my own mind more and more to become also a mirror of this love, to become a reflection of that love. Thus, this goddess of love of God is constantly engaged in the service of her Lord. So we can see again that any living entity that wants to enter into the service of divine love of Srimati Radhika's maidservant is already in the service when they only desire it because she immediately wants to use all the living entities into that service because that is her service. It's a natural process. Because anyone who just says, make me your Dasi, you know, let me become your Dasi, oh, Srimati Radhika, help me, she immediately takes this into the service. Because this is their service. That is what the sadhus say about bhakti and the glories of bhakti. After learning this about the attributes of bhakti from the sadhus, and the Shastras, which person would become dedicated to the practices of karma or jnana, giving up the practice of bhakti? Which thirsty person would give up an ocean of nectar to run after a mirage or an illusion? And which person who is thirsty for milk would give up the Kamandenu cow to take shelter of a donkey. Therefore, there can be no doubt about it that the person who gives up the shelter of devotion to the personality of Godhead to become devoted to practicing karma and jnana is an ignorant fool who is deceived by Maya. I'm just checking the time right now because I don't want to take time away from from the kirtan. We have when do they start? Maybe five thirty. Five thirty. More, more, more twenty minutes. We got more twelve minutes, and I just want to ask if anybody has any. Any comment, any questions? This great treasure of Prema is the fifth human pursuit, the, the, the the goal of humanity which lies beyond all different karma, jnana, atta, karma, uh, all the moksha and the karma and the artha, the religious processes. And it makes one relish the sweet flavors of Krishna's sweetness. And Prema, this divine love, causes Krishna to be subdued by his own devotees. And Prema bestows the bliss of relishing Krishna's service. Therefore, loving devotion is the very life support of the devotees. They are always agitated, they are always eager by this thirst for loving devotion and spend their lives in a devotional way with topmost eagerness. And the devotee who is deprived of prema or feels like, I don't have any prema, I cannot reach prema, feels like a fish out of water, flapping for the want of life. So this was the verse about the glories of Bhakti, of Bhakti Devi and those who practice Bhakti. 
and I like uh, how Baba is explaining it so poetically, how she enters into our lives, how she slowly enters into our hearts, into our mind. And if we keep ourselves open, she can overtake our whole existence so that we, by the mercy of our Guru Parampara, connect to the direct service to our dear beloved Srimati Radhika and her dasis in our spiritual senses. And this doesn't need to take many lifetimes. It can take it can, can happen today. It can ha happen at any second if we just believe in it, if we are eager and if we have a faith and the trust and the love. Radhe, Radhe. I want to share a, a, a wonderful uh, experience. It's happened for 10 minutes here in our flat in Birkenfeld. We have a little heavy circumstance in the material world uh, in the flat, uh, Suniti, you know, but uh, today uh, Gurudev inspired me in my heart, cook a coffee, a milk coffee for, for my friend here. And I have to, oh, no, I must look, I must hear the lecture and I come a little late today, but I must cook a coffee every day. I make it not. And then, and then I go to Sumati and say, uh, greetings, lovely greetings from Gurudev. <laughs> when she drink the coffee. And then she come back. I sit here and, and show me a picture in the tas in the cup. It's a very hard, a milk shaum heart in the, in the tas. She have drinking it, it's finished, it's empty. And then she looked me, you want to come? No, she wants not to come. She's so, so shy, Sumati is so shy. And then I, she was so, she has so lovely eyes. I'm, I'm crying for this experience. She also so happy. Uh, it's very, very, uh, very a uh, circumstance in the last day, but but the day, Jay Gurudev, it appeared here in this, <laughs> in this world we are. So thank you for, for this wonderful lecture today. Also, all words, it's perfectly right for ex inner experience. And I want to share this day with my bad English. And <laughs> we can thank you. Thank you. So nice for here, the lectures and the... Suniti, so, you are like, uh, like uh, also Chayananda, so nice to read the uh, words slowly and we can understand. I have no idea from anything, but it's flowed deep in our heart. And I must today always cry for this wonderful mercy. Jai, Ho. Jai Sri Radha. Jai Thank Shri you. Radha. Thank you. Greetings. Wow. Gurdiv, did you hear this? You appeared in a heart in the coffee cup today. <laughs> and I have learned it what, from Gaura. <laughs> what are you doing to us, Gurdiv? You come into the coffee heart. <laughs> I sent you the picture, Suniti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send the picture. Gurdiv, sent... listen, some magic happened today. <laughs> you want to come? You look nice. Come. Come, Suniti. That's Umati. Come. That's, you look nice. Yeah, nice. You say hello. Gurdiv is here. When you want, you say hello. Come, come, come. No? See, I'm very shy I'm very today. Shy. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> we have no voice, Gurdiv, of yours. Oh. Can can somebody come and, and speak it to the mic? Because we don't hear it like that, unfortunately. We need to your voice going on. 
Nade, could you hear now? No. 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 Okay. Now it's uh, muted. Still, we cannot hear, but we feel your blessings good if they are coming. <laughs> Seems like far away the voice, but I don't know, maybe some technical. So if I find out later on what Gurudev said, I will just somehow put it in Radha Dasyam, okay, so that you all can cherish his blessings. I'm sure he was very happy and fully satisfied with the, the love you have, Rajesh. Buddy, and how loving you are exchanging coffee with our dear Somati on the order of your heart to heart relationship. That's very nice. Yeah, also Munger Raj Mandir, after Mongolatik, a Pujariji, prepare a chai. Also afternoon, oh. and also uh, every morning, uh, our uh, Satchabrata Ji and uh, uh, always prepare and uh, some fruits and uh, coffee and uh, sandwich, and uh, so this is. Uh, we are so uh, happy and we are very thankful. And this kind of prema is and loving exchanges here also every day happening. Nade, nade. Yes, love goes through the belly mm -hmm. and it's very simple like that. It need not to be complicated. Jai Sri Radhe. Jai Sri Radhe. Thank you everyone for joining and sharing your love.